Great to have you with us here this morning. And as, um, as Adrian's already said, we're going to be talking over these next three weeks about uh, the Holy Spirit. Now, um, as a church, we are part of the Apostolic Church UK. That's the movement that we belong to. Um, and it's an evangelical Pentecostal movement that was established uh, in 1916, coming out of the Welsh Revival. We believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, um, and we have 11 sort of core beliefs. We call them the tenets of the church, but basically they're the core beliefs of the church, and you can find them on our website. If you go on there, they're all listed on there. And the very first one of them says this, we believe in the one true and living God who eternally exists in three persons in unity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, um, sort of theologically that means we're a trinitarian church because we believe in the trinity we believe the bible clearly talks about god the father god the son and god the holy spirit and sometimes the holy spirit's called the spirit of god sometimes it's the spirit of jesus sometimes it's the spirit of truth some people say the holy ghost but it's the holy spirit is the third person of the trinity um, and the trinity is something that is is quite tricky to get your head round, really. Um, and I don't think we probably will ever properly get our head round it because uh, our human capacity, I don't think, can really absorb all that it is. Some people have, um, have sort of given analogies and, and sort of hints that help us, um, but they're all flawed because they can't fully explain what the Trinity is. Some people talk about, about H2O. So H2O can be water, it can be steam, it can be ice. So it's all three things, but it's still H2O. So that sort of helps maybe. Other people say, well, it's a bit like you can be a father, a brother, and a son. Or if you're a lady, you can be a mother, a sister, and a daughter, all at the same time, but you're still one person. Again, completely flawed, because if you look at all the, but it just gives a hint, doesn't it, of how three things can be one. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the third person in the Trinity, fully God and fully uh, a person. And as we say, over the next three weeks, we're going to be talking about that. Um, we're going to be speaking about the Holy Spirit, how he operates, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So let's kick off. Who is the Holy Spirit? As I've always said, he's God. He's part of the Trinity, but he's an individual person. Um, we can see that the, the Holy Spirit has feelings. When we read through the Bible, uh, we, we can see there it says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit if we don't live in accordance with the way that God calls us to live. So he has emotions. He, he, he can be grieved. Um, it also says he can be blasphemed. We can't blaspheme someone who doesn't exist. It's, he has to be a person. Uh, and he's also God, because if you can blaspheme him, he has to be God. As we read uh, through, the, through the, the Bible, we see that he has intentions, he loves, he communicates, he testifies, he teaches, he prays. And uh, I've got some just three examples here where it talks about some of those things. So if you've got your Bible with you, um, the first one is in John 15 and verse 26. It says, when the advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, this is Jesus speaking, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. So he testifies. Um, earlier on in the year and last year, we were looking at the book of Acts. And if you look at Acts 13 and verse 2, this is the church in Antioch. And it says, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said to them, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I've called them to. And then if you look at Romans 8 and verses 26 to 27, 
here, Paul's writing to the church in Rome, he says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So he prays on our behalf. So he's a person, one of the three persons in the Trinity. And he's eternally existed. So if you go right to the beginning of the Bible, we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So before the world began, the Spirit was with the Father, was with the Son, eternally in communion, eternally in unity with them as the earth was created and the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. And then if we go to the last book of the Bible, and we go to Revelation. In Revelation it says the Spirit and the Bride, the Bride there is the church, uh, it says, come, let anyone who hears this say, come, let anyone who's thirsty, come, let anyone who desires uh, drink freely from the water of life. So from before time began, the Holy Spirit was there. And when time was finished, the Holy Spirit will be there. Before time and when time comes to an end, he, he was and he is and he forever will be. So what is the Holy Spirit's work? Well, we see part of it there in creation. It was hovering over the waters and was part of the creation of the earth and the heavens. In the Old Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit came on particular people at particular times for a particular purpose. So we read that, that the Spirit empowered people like Samson and Saul and Gideon. And when the Holy Spirit came on them, they were able to do amazing things that they couldn't do in their own natural ability. And uh, sadly with some of them, uh, we read like with Saul that, that the, he drifted from God and the Spirit left him and he hadn't realized that the Spirit had gone from him and it didn't work out well. And the Spirit too spoke to the prophets. He spoke to them and he spoke through them. Uh, and they brought God's word to the people and they drew the people back to an understanding of the holiness of God and his ways. And through them, the Spirit also gave a glimpse of the coming Messiah. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the Spirit spoke to the prophets, and the prophets told the people that this Messiah would be coming, describing his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection hundreds of years before Jesus was born. And, and sometimes in, in amazing accuracy, the Holy Spirit was there, uh, empowering those prophets. And God also promised through them that one day the Holy Spirit would be given to all of his people, not just a few and not just for a particular time, but the Holy Spirit would come and it would be for all. And as we step into the New Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit was there during Jesus's life, um, when, when the angel appeared to Mary right at the beginning and says, you're going you're gonna to become pregnant with the Son of God, it says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. We read those verses in, in, at Christmas time, don't we? Therefore, the Holy One born in you will be called the Son of God. The Holy Spirit was there at the, at the inception of, of Jesus. And then later on at Jesus' baptism, we read it a few weeks ago when we had the baptism service, that the Holy Spirit... As Jesus came up from being baptized, God the Father says, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. He was there then. And Jesus throughout his ministry talked about the Holy Spirit and the fact that the Holy Spirit would come after him. He said, I will send you the helper or, or the comforter um, to be with them always. You see, Jesus was fully man and fully God. Another mystery that's really difficult to get your head around, but he was fully man and fully God. And because of his humanity, he could only be in one place at one time. And so he ministered to, to the disciples, he ministered to the people that were there. But you see, the Spirit of God can be everywhere, all the time. 
And that's why the Spirit needed to come, to dwell in me, to dwell in you, to dwell in uh, all the Spirit-filled Christians across the world, all at the same time, no boundaries, no, no place, no time being a boundary or an issue for him. And for the body of Christ to be built up, we need the Holy Spirit dwelling in us in all its fullness, not just being with us, um, but being in us. You know, we talk at Christmas time, don't we, about Emmanuel, God with us. And that's actually our theme for this Christmas. Uh, and Jesus came and he was with us. Uh, but the Holy Spirit comes and he indwells in us. He's not just alongside us, he's inside us. He's, he's, um, his, his presence, the presence of God is in us. And as we live and move, we carry the presence of God with us when we carry the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, and Paul, in, when he's writing to the Corinthians, he says, it's a bit like having this treasure. You've got God inside you and you're carrying it in this jar of clay, our fragile human bodies. But we have the presence and we have the power of God within us. So the, what's, the Holy's, what's the Holy Spirit's work actually in us? Well, firstly, he convicts us. So even before we come to an understanding or we accept uh, Jesus into our lives, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. He convicts us of our need of a saviour. He comforts us. He helps us. He guides us. He reminds us. He teaches us. He's alongside us. He counsels us. He intercedes for us, he advocates for us, and he empowers us. It's quite a long list, that, isn't it? Shall I say that again? <laughs> he comforts us, he helps us, he guides us, reminds us, teaches us, comes alongside us, counsels us, intercedes for us, advocates for us, and he empowers us. You know, there's no part of our lives that as a believer, we do not need the Holy Spirit. Whatever the situation, whether it's a, what we think might be a practical situation, whether it's a spiritual situation in our mind, whatever we think, we need the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us. You see, if we try and do things in our own strength, we will limit what God wants to do. But when we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us and we allow the Spirit to move in us and to use us, then God can do amazing things with us. What we also see in the New Testament is the Holy Spirit is available for every believer. So as I said, in the Old Testament, we see that the Spirit came at particular times on particular people for a particular purpose. But as we come to the New Testament, we see it's, the, it's available to every believer. As we look through the book of Acts, um, we can see that there are times um, when, when the Holy Spirit manifests itself in, in an amazing way and, and God's, God's work is, is uh, furthered. We see on the day of Pentecost, the apostles are filled with the Holy Spirit and that day 3,000 people come to know the Lord. And at various points as we go through uh, the New Testament, we see the Spirit moving on men and women and them doing amazing things. But the underlying thing is that it was available to every believer. And in fact, being full of the Spirit was one of the qualifications for any sort of position within uh, the church family. So when, the, um, uh, when it became necessary to have deacons to help distribute food to widows, the requirement for those people was that they were full of the Spirit and of wisdom. Now, there are some people um, and some denominations who believe that the Holy Spirit was only for them. That, that the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit were only for the apostles and for the early church to help the church get established. But as we read through Acts, as we read through the other books of the, of the New Testament, there's, there's no indication that the Holy Spirit is only for a short period of time or only for that group of people. We see that everywhere the gospel was preached, everywhere that churches were established, the Holy Spirit was in operation amongst the people there. And if we want to see God's church built, if we want to see God's kingdom come, then we have to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us needs to know something of that empowering of the Holy Spirit in our life. Because we need, we, we need God's supernatural ability 
not our human abilities because we'll run out of capacity. So how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Well, it's, it's not some formula or some process or some qualification you get when you get to a point where you're super holy and you've read the Bible. It's not that. We first have to accept, as I said right at the beginning, that the Holy Spirit is a person. And, and he wants to have an intimate relationship with us. And so we need to have a willingness to be open and to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And as I said, you know, if we've recognized our need of a savior, we've already encountered the Holy Spirit because he's convicted us. He, he's come to the point of, 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 of showing us that we need a savior. But receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't just an encounter, it's an immersion. <laughs> It's an equipping, it's a filling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he's talking about the Holy Spirit, he says to his disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, we recently had a, a water baptism service, didn't we, when we were down at the school. Uh, and those that were baptized took the decision to be fully immersed in water as a recognition of their faith in Jesus. And Jesus here in this passage, he uses the same word, which means immersion, to describe what he means about receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. It's something that isn't superficial. It's an immersion. It's a filling with God's presence that makes us effective witnesses for him. And unlike baptism, which is a one-off thing as a declaration of our faith, the Holy Spirit shouldn't just be a one-off thing, not just a specific moment when we experience the overwhelming presence of God, and as a result of that we might speak in tongues or something else might happen. Unlike water baptism, it's not a one-off sign, it's, it should be a, a refilling uh, and, and an ongoing thing for the Holy Spirit to come and to fill us and to empower us because we're leaky vessels. Us, us clay jars, we leak. And, and God fills us with his Holy Spirit and some of it leaks out because we, we get caught up with other stuff. Uh, and, and often God you know, asks us to do things which are beyond our human abilities and we need the Holy Spirit to empower us to do those things. Next week, um, Mark will be talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And there's some of the, the evidences that, that we've actually received the Holy Spirit and, and been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And some of those things might seem a little bit unusual. Uh, well, they are because they're supernatural. They are unusual. They aren't the norm. Uh, and maybe in, in your times in church, you, maybe you've seen some sort of extremes and things that have been a bit weird. Um, and that might have made you a bit reticent about, uh, about really having the, the fullness, having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I want to assure you this morning that God created you as an individual. He created you specifically the way you are because he had a purpose for your life. And so whatever happens to someone else, God treats you as an individual. And when God comes by his spirit, he doesn't, he doesn't force things on you that, that aren't things that you uh, are willing to receive. Because he knows you. He made you. Uh, and whatever someone else's experience is, God will give you a specific experience for you. And his promise is that if we draw near to him, if we truly desire more of him, if we really want, that relationship with the Holy Spirit, then he will empower us by the Spirit and he'll do it in a way that's personal to you. Whatever signs someone else might have that they've had a filling of the Holy Spirit, there are signs and they're signs that other people will notice afterwards because God will empower you and you'll, and you'll, you'll operate in a different dimension but they'll be specific for you because that God is a specific God and he, and he knows you and he loves you. 
and he wants to, to he wants to empower you he wants to gift you for the life that he wants you to live so this morning we're going to we're going to make some space uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to come. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here. He's with us every time we gather together uh, and we carry something of his presence with us. But we just want to invite him in, in, a, in a way this morning that, that just allows us to experience something more of who he is, something more of who Jesus is. Uh, I'm going to ask Shin. Shin, can you come and just... Ah, there she is. Can you just come and play? Let's stand, shall we? Let's, let's stand. Father God, we thank you that you are a God that knows us intimately, that you created us when we were in our mother's womb. You knew us before we had our first breath. And Lord, your word says that you have good gifts for us. And often, Lord, we're we're more reluctant to receive them than you are to give. And so this morning we just come in these moments and we welcome you here amongst us by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And, and Holy Spirit, we want you to have your way amongst us. Lord, we need more of you and less of us. And so, Lord, as we're here this morning, we just want to open ourselves up to, to all that you have for us. And Lord, if you have specific gifts that you want to give to people this morning, I just pray that, that in these moments they will just be open to receive what you want to give to them. Lord, as we worship, as we, as we praise, Lord, may our praise be a, a sweet-smelling incense in your nostrils. And Lord, may your presence fall in this place today. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead. Will to declare to you, the past is over. Remain